What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Wu Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, I have been literally on the road all day long uh, up to Pennsylvania to get this uh, lime plaster and basically get an education on how to put the stuff on. And, uh, man... Traffic is a little different when you're going in the backwoods of Pennsylvania towards Lancaster. You got to worry about passing combines and Amish wagons being pulled by trailers. But this is crazy. I've got to do more. I, I, th this is how crazy this thing is, is I literally have horse's hair to mix with the lime mortar. Horse, real horse hair that I got to mix with the lime uh, excuse me, plaster to go on the house. So that was definitely a, a, a real learning experience and I can't wait to actually work on putting the plaster on the walls. But anyway, here's an interesting thing. Really interesting. I have a great friend, Greg, you know, who, who sends me stuff all the time on Facebook and things. And it was funny because Saturday night, Saturday night, he sent me... Um, he, he, a, a message Facebook once again this is the tight end we should draft if we are truly going to draft one he's got amazing hands and is a pancake blocker on the run and passing plays he would start day one for us and I think he could start uh, he could take I mean, he could start Jake Ferguson and not draft a tight end hold on I think we could start Jake Ferguson and not draft a tight end if we are presented with another better player at another position at 26. And so he sent me that on Saturday. And it's funny because now all of a sudden, we got people talking about this. Uh, Timothy Rapp wrote this today, an article. Don't be shocked if Dallas Cowboys address their tight end position at this year's draft, even potentially in the first round. Dane Bolger of the Athletic Project uh, projected Notre Dame tight end Michael Meyer to the Cowboys to 26 overall in his most recent mock draft, writing as a one plugged-in league source told me about Myers and the Cowboys. I just can't see Dallas passing. The position is a major need for the Cowboys, with Jake Ferguson currently projected to start, and Peyton Henderson also expected to see playing time after Dalton Schultz signed with the Houston Texans free agency. Ferguson and Henderson each made an impact on the, as rookies in 2022, Ferguson appeared in 16 games and posted 19 catches for 174 yards and two scores. While Hendershot saw action in all 17 games and pulled in 11 catches for 103 yards and two touchdowns. Clearly, that duo made the Cowboys feel comfortable enough in the position to allow Schultz to walk. But knowing the tight end position has some pretty talented options in this year's draft couldn't have hurt either. Meyer is able to make an impact as both a passer and blocker and would instantly upgrade the position. He registered at least 800 receiving yards in each of the past two seasons for Notre Dame to go along with 16 touchdown catches during that time. Man. Wow. That's a lot better than my man uh, Darnell Washington's numbers. 800 receiving yards in each of the last two years. And here's the thing that's crazy because I've talked about this for a couple of years. When you look at Super Bowl winning teams or teams that are really, really good, one thing you see is, on those teams, a great tight end. A great tight end. Seriously. Seriously. Think about, you know, Gronk with Tom Brady. Think about um, Kelsey with Pat Mahomes. Uh, think about George Kittle with San Francisco. Think about Dallas Goddard with, with the Eagles. All these teams have great tight ends that are a security blanket and actually can be deceptive. Because the thing about tight end is you don't know if he's going to be catching the football or if he's going to be blocking. And if you have a guy who can do both well, you can disguise what you want, what, what you're doing. And see, that's the thing is in football. And too many times with Jason Garrett's offense and even Kellen Moore, you kind of got a good idea what the Cowboys are trying to do. It was just going to be, we're just going to be tougher than you are. We're just going to outplay you. Well, here's the thing in football. 
everybody is good on both sides of the football. I mean, some of them are a little bit better than others, but if you have, you know, if you're relying solely on just being more physical and better on every single play and not have any deception out there, you're not going to make it all the way. You have to learn to be where they're not expecting you to be. And that's one of the reasons why I love 12 personnel so much. We probably won't see a lot of 12 personnel this year because of the change in offensive philosophy of going to the West Coast. But it's actually more important to have a better tight end, a guy who can block and a guy who can be that security blanket. And as much as you think about Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman and even Tony Romo, they had that security blanket guy. The term came about with Jay Novacek with Troy Aikman. When the play's breaking down, you got a guy out there who's a big target who can get the, hand, the ball in his hands and make a play and bail the quarterback out. And as much as we saw last year, it was kind of cool because you could line up with two tight ends and look like it's a heavy package. They put eight men in a box, and all of a sudden you can use them as two receivers. And you end up basically having five wide outs in an empty backfield. So tight end is a lot more important than a lot of people give it credit to be. I dare say that you see more teams with a great tight end in the Super Bowl than you see teams with a great wide receiver. That's a fact. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So, yeah, he is definitely um, Mina Coombs. Notre Dame tight end Michael Meyer has an incredible hands, blocks well, and is a nightmare to bring down. So why is he slipping on the boards? Hmm. Um, I think people might be overthinking him. We'll discuss tight ends in today's podcast. Interesting. So could the Dallas Cowboys, hmm, the Dallas Cowboys draft a tight end in the first round? And tonight for our live stream coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern, I, I got to get myself together because I'm, I'm literally exhausted. Get something to eat here and I got a couple things I need to do uh, in the workshop. But my buddy DMV, who will be on the road again with us on our way to Kansas City, is souring on Darnell Washington. Hmm. Hmm. So we're going to have that discussion tonight at 9 o'clock. Um, but yeah, I definitely need to find out a little bit more about uh, Michael Myers. Is he like a nightmare? Michael Myers? Is, wasn't he like a Friday 13th or something? Yeah, he's also an actor. Yeah. He's also an actor. All right. Let's see. And Lance Zerline of NFL.com wrote that Myers' professional comp was Jason Witten, calling him a big combination tight end with the demeanor to run block and size for tough chain moving catches underneath who might need to polish his root running to become a high volume target, but he's a safe pick and will be a good pro who can become a plus player as a run blocker and pass catcher. And the other thing too, if you got a really good tight end who can block, um, that helps the offensive line too. Just saying, just saying. All right, good people. Let me get my stuff together and get ready for this live stream tonight. Hope you all join us, and I'll have some thoughts on <laughs> Jalen Hurts' contract, too. Peace.